Relations and Cooperation for the Republic of South Africa's Parliament. We also welcome the department. I see today it is led by Deputy Minister Mashiro Tlamini. You are welcome, Deputy Minister, the DG, and the entire team that comes from the department. We welcome the administration that is accompanying the Portfolio Committee on International Relations and Cooperation. We also welcome South Africans who may be following the proceedings of this accountability meeting between the Portfolio Committee and the Department on the channels that have been provided by Parliament as part of making our work as parliamentarians transparent and accessible to the people. Today, Honorable Members, we are going to be dealing with one item, which is accountability for quarter one and two for both the Department and African Renaissance Fund. Before we do that, I thought it appropriate that we should uh, have a moment of silence for the passing away of South Africans in particular, AKA South Africans who have lost their lives yesterday in Limpopo in a horrific accident. South Africans who have lost their lives yesterday in KZN in a random shooting and other South Africans who have lost their lives for various other reasons. As we pay tribute to them through a moment of silence, we will extend that to the people of Turkey and Syria who are a victims of a natural disaster, the earthquake that measures up to 7.4% on the Rakhtar scale. And we recognize the role that has been played by the world, in particular the role that has been played by South Africa in trying to rescue life, but also to lessen the burden on the government of Turkey and the people of Syria. So we'll do a moment of silence, thank you. May all their departed souls rest in eternal peace. Thank you very much, honorable members. Can we have a mover for adoption of today's agenda? It's honorable Panza, I move for Chairperson. Thank you very much, Good honorable Panza. Seconda? Mamu Zungus, second year, Chairperson. Okay, Mam Zungus, thank you very much. Do we have apologies, Nolu? Andy, sir, are you aware of any apologies? No, Chairperson, I am not. Uh, Deputy Minister Mashiro Zamini, any apology for the minister and the deputy minister Buertas? Uh, Chair, I've got an apology of uh, our DG who's out of the country and the minister. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure about uh, honorable voters. I'll, I'll check. I think the officials have got the apology there. Thank you. Okay. Yes, I see the DG has joined us. Uh, he's here on the, on the line, but thank you very much for that. Sorry, sorry, Chair. The yeah, ones no, that are on the lines are our presenters in the office of the DG, of course. Oh, sorry. Thank you very much. Hello, Chairperson. Yes, no. Oh, oh, Chair, my apologies and the challenge of the network, Chair. Proceed. Uh, chair, we, we, have, uh, we have three apologies, Chairperson. The, the, the one is from the Minister and the DG. They are attending the 42nd ordinary session of the AU. Executive Council in Addis Ababa. And then the third apology is from Deputy Minister Bortes. Uh, he's also attending another meeting, Chairperson. And then we have uh, the fourth apology is from Urban Sani, who has requested to leave the meeting at 12. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Bluba. 
Deputy Minister, I'm now going to hand over to you to lay the foundation for the presentation that will be done by the department. Comrade Thank you very much. Chair, uh, okay, sorry, Chair. there's somebody screaming at me. I can't see who is that. Uh, okay. No, Deputy Chair, Minister, what is yes? Yes, I just want to record my presence, uh, Slado. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you very much for making the means to join the meeting. Yeah, Honorable Buertes. Deputy Minister Mashiro Jamini, I'm now going to hand over to you so that you lay the foundation for the presentation of the report by both the department and ARF. Over to you, Deputy Minister. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Members of the Committee. It gives me great pleasure to introduce DECO's presentation on its performance during quarter one and two of the current financial year, which covers the period 1st April to the 30th September 2022. During the reporting period, Chair, we finally put the COVID-19 pandemic behind us and resumed our duties in person. A welcome relief after nearly two years. I am pleased to inform the committee that during quarter one, the department achieved 21 of the 21 targets set for the quarter. In other words, a 100% achievement. In quarter two, we also achieved 23 of the 23 targets set for the quarter, which constitute another 100% achievement. The presentation will further detail of the achievement in the respective programs. Building on the work embarked on during the previous quarters, the engagement undertaken during the reporting period focused on the department's contribution to tackle the persistent triple challenges of inequality, unemployment and poverty. Moving forward, DECO will continue to utilize its foreign policy to tackle domestic challenges as part of our national interest. I am also pleased, Chair, to introduce the ARF, the ARF update on its performance during quarter one and two of the current financial year, which, covers, in the, progress. which covered the period 1st of April to 30th um, September 2022. The African Renaissance and International Cooperation Fund continue to be an available instrument in supporting South African foreign policy. In line with our foreign policy, the ARF Fund remain an important tool that seek to enhance development assistance and cooperation with a dedicated focus on the realization of the African agenda. Through the ARF, we are continuing with our commitment to the African agenda. The project in Cabo Delgado, Mozambique, will contribute to significantly assisting with socioeconomic issues post the conflict in that part of the region. We have made significant progress in implementing our APP targets in both the department and ARF. The budget that was allocated will be fully utilized by the end of the financial year, especially the budget that is allocated for ARF uh, chairperson. The presentation will provide further details of the achievement on how non-achievement will be addressed, especially in the ARF. Honorable Chair and honorable members, I want to thank you for allowing me to deliver this brief introductory remark. If you allow me, Chairperson, I just want to hand over to the acting COO, who will be uh, presenting uh, quarter one and two for the department, who is Ms. Baloyi, and followed by Mr. Basitire, will present the ARF, ARF quarter one and two. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Thank you, uh, Deputy Minister. Good morning to the Honorable Chair, Honorable Members, and also the colleagues uh, from DERCO and other members. Uh, 
as per the norm, uh, in terms of our reporting, uh, we will then uh, our report will obviously be front loaded with performance information on the core functions under program two until four, uh, just to be able to enable us to uh, highlight some of the key issues and also the achievement in the implementation of our South African foreign policy. Uh, the compliance, which is uh, under program one, will then uh, reflect thereafter. I just want to highlight that as per the Deputy Minister's presentation that uh, the department uh, in quarter one uh, managed to achieve 100% where 21 targets were all of them achieved. And then in uh, quarter two, the 23 targets that were there as said were also achieved as per outlined. Uh, in terms of the summary of the achievement, I will then start with uh, program two, where you'll be able to see that all the five areas that we'll be reporting on, which is the reports on high level visit, reports on investment strategy, reports on trade strategy, reports on tourism, and also on our regional integrations, are also highlighted there as per performance. During quarter one, uh, and to the department uh, continues to use our bilateral engagement as instruments to be able to pursue our South African national interests. This included uh, the structured uh, bilateral mechanism, your high level visit, economic diplomacy initiatives that were undertaken by our missions abroad and also at head office. But also building on the work impact on the various quarters uh, we have also done engagement undertaken under this period, which focus on the contribution by DERCO to be able to uh, tackle the triple challenges that we are faced with in the country and also uh, as a continent as a whole. Uh, DERCO continues to use its foreign policy to tackle the domestic challenges as part of our national interest, as you, you all are aware. Uh, the engagement further focus on areas of mutual uh, interest between South Africa and other countries uh, you will be able to see. In, con in continuing our efforts to accelerate South Africa's economic diplomacy, DERCO through its missions abroad is focusing on opportunities to support growing regional, continental and global trade and investment. Uh, as I will be uh, doing the presentation, I will definitely be taking the smart principles uh, that will be disaggregated into three main categories. That will be your political engagement, your trade and investment, your promotion and tourism, and through other regions, that is Africa, through the regions that we have, that will be Africa, Europe and Americas, and then there will be Asia and Middle East. I so my sister. It looks like your slides are not reflecting on the screen. Unless the problem is on my side. Thank you, Chef. If I'm the only one having this problem, there's no problem. We can proceed. Okay. No, you, our... you, are, you are correct, Chairperson. We, we, we don't see it uh, okay. on the screen. Yes. Just make sure that you share the, the slides. Okay, thank you, Chairperson. We're trying to redo it again. Yeah, we have it now. You have it now, okay, thank you. Yeah, Political Africa. Yes, thank you. Program two, International okay. Relations. Thank you, Chairperson. I will then proceed uh, with my uh, report of program two, and I will start with the political uh, engagements that we had. Uh, the first one uh, that I will report on, you will realize that the slides are actually a lot. It's about 86 slides that we have here. I will go through some and just skip uh, some of the others because it's more of a work. It's just the difference will be a region or a country, but the work you find that is the same if it's a BNC, if it's JCC, but I will go through them in a way that uh, you will be able to follow. Uh, through political, when we go to Africa, uh, we talk to uh, Bissau, a successful state visit by President of Guinea-Bissau was held in April and then here. 
Uh, the various uh, MOUs were actually uh, signed through the high level meetings uh, of uh, defense, uh, agriculture, health, health related uh, cooperation, and uh, support was really uh, agreed upon here. And then moving to Khabirone and uh, Harare, you will see that it was uh, BNCs that were held there and various uh, areas that were actually agreed upon, which will include your uh, publicity, your issues of security, the issues of economics and so forth. And then we also had a senior officials meeting in Abidjan uh, where uh, MOUs and also the implementation in terms of the review was uh, discussed there. And then there was the ninth uh, Egypt and South Africa Joint Commission for Cooperation, which uh, was uh, led uh, to improvements in bilateral uh, cooperation in various sectors that would be your agricultural health and also education. Uh, BNC in, in, in Windhoek, which is Namibia. And then in terms of the JCCs, we moved to Uganda, Burundi, JCC, and also Seychelles, which was the senior uh, meeting you can be able to see. And then for uh, moving along also, we had uh, an att attendance of the swearing of the uh, ceremony by the deputy president during September in Kenya, where he went to represent our president. And then we moved to Mali. Uh, the Comoros, uh, the visit by the Minister of Energy, Water, Hydro, Hydrocarbon, and uh, Agriculture, Fishery, and uh, Tourism. And then we had various uh, high-level meetings which were held during this uh, reporting period in uh, countries such as Zimbabwe, Botswana, Cote d'Ivoire, Burundi, Somalia, Eritrea, Ethiopia, and so forth. I'll then move to the political report which then talks to Americas and Europe. Here also a number of high level uh, structured bilateral working visit also took place in this region. And I will just point out a few. Uh, the first one talks to the visit uh, by US Deputy Secretary of State, Wendy Sherman, a uh, fruitful, uh, which saw a successful discussion between both uh, the minister and also the deputy ministers. And they focus on uh, uh, areas of shared uh, priorities, of which will include your health, your climate issues, your energy, regional and global peace and security. In particular, other uh, of interest was the conflict between Russia uh, and Ukraine. And then we have uh, various high political bilateral consultations and engagement, which were held uh, in uh, Europe by, between South Africa and Uruguay, Jamaica, uh, Ecuador, US, and, and the rest of the others. Uh, also, there was also in September other uh, various meetings that actually took place, uh, which were highlighted in various uh, media houses. Uh, where our minister went uh, to the US on the sideline uh, prior to UNGA and so forth, you'll be able to see there was a bilateral uh, between uh, President Biden administration and SA, which focused on the promotion of our economic diplomacy and cooperation in education during a working visit, uh, which I have already alluded to that it was in September. And minister also co-chaired a successful uh, meeting of the strategic dialogue with the US State uh, Secretary of State. Also just the uh, end of August, and also the President Biden's state visit to South Africa in August saw so an announcement of US government's new strategy for Sub-Sahara Africa. Alongside uh, the minister, they attended uh, an event in honor of uh, Women's Day uh, at the South African Media uh, Research Council in Pretoria. Moving along, the Director General Danko also successfully co-chaired a meeting of a working group on Africa and global issues in Washington during the sidelines of UNGA, as I've already uh, alluded to. Various, then I will move to Europe. Uh, the first one that I will mention there is the Europe uh, uh, official visit that was made by our minister. And then, and also the, it the Italian outgoing minister of uh, foreign affairs, uh, Minister Lunghi, Giamau, 
during September, which focus on the outcomes of the last G20 meeting, the rollout of the COVID vaccine uh, for developing countries and the upcoming elections in, in Italy. There along uh, from there, the minister also delivered a speech uh, in a conference titled Intelligent, Intelligence in the World, uh, Europe and Italy. It is uh, also regarded as a strategic important uh, for South Africa to participate in such uh, uh, conferences. Alongside, obviously, then they were, uh, we've got the Madrid, we've got the Paris uh, conference, which took place. We've got the Hague, where the Bitima Global also visited Netherlands uh, in, in September uh, for to be able to discuss uh, South Africa and the uh, the Hague water opportunities and the MOUs there were actually signed. And then there was a visit by our, the mission also met with the foreign uh, minister to discuss working visit uh, with Lisbon. And then we've got Dublin uh, also engagement there, the MOUs of between trade investment in SA and Irish uh, Exporters Association was raised. And then in London and also Paris, also the issues of UNESCO World uh, Heritage uh, during August in Athens, uh, Norway, in Denmark, also uh, Sweden, Libertia, Chisnia, Moscow, Kivit, Abidjan, and then I will then move to uh, Asia and Middle East, also the issues of uh, politics there that we undertook. Uh, the first one will be your New Zealand, where the senior officials meeting took place between South Africa and New Zealand, focusing on uh, various areas, which we included uh, agriculture, civil affairs, small business uh, uh, development, uh, education, and also issues of uh, scholarship. Uh, that varied then went to issues of trade and transport, etc. In Vietnam, also the Deputy Minister Mashiro co-chaired virtually the fifth meeting of uh, a Vietnam Partnership Forum for Economic, Trade, Scientific, Technical and Cultural Cooperation during uh, in, in April. And also we had our DDG, Acting DDG Lali co-chairing uh, the 11th Foreign Office Consultation in August. And then moving along to Jordan, our Deputy Minister also uh, uh, there was a, an OMOU bilateral consultation for future consultation in terms of issues of food, cyber, energy, security, which was explored. Lebanon also, where the DM also took, uh, went there. Syria, she took, uh, undertook a three-nation visit there to Syria, Iran, Lebanon, and so forth. Uh, moving along to uh, Taipei, uh, a meeting with the Deputy Minister of uh, Education of Taiwan took place uh, in July 2022, where they were conveying their appreciation with the Taiwanese government together with South Africa, just in terms of uh, expansion of the cultural exchange, which were uh, discussed. We also looked at Beijing. Uh, Indonesia, where the minister attended the G20 in July in Bali. And then she also, as she was there, she also moved to, to Singapore. There were issues of trade and science and technology were discussed. Uh, for uh, I will then move to the second one, which talks to our trade and investment. Here, various uh, trade initiatives, meetings and support uh, took place in Africa in the following countries uh, in order just to increase our trade. The countries includes Algeria, Algiers, Central Africa Republic, uh, Guinea Conakry, Cairo, Sao Tome, uh, Principe, and then and Mali. And then a meeting with Mali Investment Promotion uh, Agency during June 2022 identified investment opportunities for South Africa in Mali. Uh, in areas such as waste management, renewable uh, energy, railways, uh, construction and infrastructure development, and also various uh, investment uh, discussions uh, took place in various sectors that you can be able to see there, which include your mining, your aquaculture, your digital technologies, uh, uh, your issues of commerce, cosmetics, and so forth. 
And then the above is an ongoing, obviously, support uh, to missions to be able to uh, support our bilateral uh, bilateral investments. Uh, moving along, I will then move to to as I move to I will then move to Americas and Europe, which uh, then uh, uh, will start with our head office and also in the mission in the region continued to also explore the investment opportunities for South Africa in line with the objective of our economic uh, reconstruction and recovery plan, which was uh, highlighted and mentioned uh, by, the, uh, by the president, which focused on priority interventions aimed at restoring growth and also creating jobs. Various countries were, uh, were engaged in various, uh, in various sectors, which will be in Finland, Rome, Brussels, Flanders, uh, Paris, Lisbon, Madrid, and Berlin, Norway, London, Russia, Athens, London, Poland, Ottawa, The Hague, uh, and so forth. And then uh, we'll then move to uh, trade and investment in the area of uh, Asia and Middle East. Also here, uh, various outreach uh, programs, initiatives were also focused in. Uh, your fresh fruit exporters on the status of market access uh, in countries in South Asia were also explored. Uh, sectors which covered trade investment opportunities in this region, which will include your hospitality, your logistics, your energy, the aviation also took place here. And we see also a working visit by Deputy Minister in the Levant regions, which took place also in August. And also uh, this one is also still a reputation. And then I'll move to tourism, which will definitely then start with Africa. In terms of Africa, you will see that there was a high level visit to SA by Comoros, uh, which focus on issues of energy, on agriculture, and also tourism as discussed. And discussion obviously included the issues of uh, tourism investment, development in Comoros, possible commencement of direct flight between South Africa and Comoros, and then moving to uh, also various issues around the issues of uh, tourism were explored with Mauritius, with Malawi, Eswatini, uh, with Botswana, Tanzania, Zambia, Benin. And then I will then move to, your, uh, to the region, Americas and Europe. Also the various issues in terms of uh, tourism promotion and also the events also were engaged and also took place uh, in countries, uh, between countries uh, such as Berlin, Portugal, Italy, Ireland, London, and also uh, various meetings that took place between the, Dep the Department of Tourism and institutions in the following countries of accreditation of your Athens, Toronto, Brasilia, Sao Paulo, Santiago, Lima, uh, and so forth. And also, you will see that uh, in uh, uh, also Paris, Moscow, The Hague, and Brasilia, uh, all those, uh, the issues of tourism we were engaged in in the last two quarters that uh, we are talking about. And then going to Asia and Middle East, also uh, still talking to the issues of uh, uh, tourism, uh, we participated uh, in tourism uh, promotion activities uh, that included uh, in missions uh, such as rock uh, in China, in uh, Australia, Philippines, Palestine, uh, Beijing, Qatar, Abu Dhabi, Shanghai, Hong Kong, uh, Singapore, Malaysia, uh, 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 and, and so forth. And then in terms of uh, one uh, or assessment report of South Africa's contribution towards the issues of peace and security, the socioeconomic development, good governance and uh, democracy and the implementation of the RI, RISDP also uh, I, will be, and I will be just outlining some of them. 
Uh, as you are aware, SADC uh, still remains uh, a foreign, our foreign uh, policy priority for South Africa and uh, in our effort uh, to be able to achieve the regional uh, development and integration within this region. Therefore, the primary goal uh, is to foster regional integration in terms of politics, uh, economics, and the benefit of, uh, in the benefits of uh, SADC as a whole. We also, uh, uh, the president of Botswana in his capacity as the chair of SACU, hosted the seventh uh, summit uh, of SACU, and uh, as its outcome, uh, the summit adopted communique which reflected on the current global developments, including the decisions uh, of uh, critical to Africa as adopted in the 12th uh, World Trade uh, Organization Ministerial Conference, the importance of remaining resolute uh, to implementing COVID-19 recovery programs, as well as the impact of the current conflict between Russia, Ukraine, and so forth. And then there was a, then the 42 second uh, ordinary SADC summit of the heads of uh, government, which was held in Kinshasa DRC, also which took place then in August. And then in part, as part of uh, SADC, uh, various uh, uh, issues uh, which contributes towards the issues of peace, stability, democracy, and good governance in the SADC regions. Uh, and then our president in his role as the outgoing uh, chairperson of uh, Organ on politics, defense, and security presented a report to SADC summit, which was held in August as already mentioned. And uh, here the president was uh, actually commended for his uh, outstanding leadership and also in terms of his continued uh, efforts to address the issues of peace and security and security threats uh, during the year and also the issues of uh, his role in the COVID-19 uh, that he played. And then I will move, uh, as we are still talking to the issues of SADC, uh, we'll move to, uh, Program three here. In terms of program three, uh, the areas that we are reporting on is the global governance, the continental cooperation, South South and the North uh, uh, South. And the report obviously will be talking to the implementation of the approved strategy and the three outcomes on the on the out, uh, reports on the outcomes of multilateral and multi-state organization reflecting. South Africa's uh, participation in an interest includes uh, that of uh, your African agenda, and that will include the three areas, which is your peace and security, your human rights, and then your economic and social uh, development uh, that I will be reporting on. I will start with the peace and security. Here, uh, the branch and the mission and the and the, and the, and the and still it, and head office uh, undertook uh, following initiatives in order to be able to support the issues of uh, peace and security initiatives. Uh, the B, the PBC, which is the Peace Building Commission, uh, ministerial memorandum was prepared, uh, recommending that South Africa should actually seek a re-election in order to be able to continue serving uh, on this uh, commission. We participated on a number of uh, the Peace Commission issues, as you can be able to see the, uh, in the in CAR, Colombia, uh, the lakes and so forth, which were taken place. And then uh, the moving to a system of uh, global governance, Open debates were held on the following, uh, where South Africa was able to air its position on various aspects. And they are uh, your open debate uh, on Palestine, on conflict and food security, on strengthening accountability and justice, and the open uh, debate on women, peace and security. And then as I move along, the intergovernmental negotiation framework on security council reform, uh, for South Africa was actively participated in, in terms of uh, negotiating and also just highlighting the common Africa position in terms of the UNS uh, reform, where we are continuing to do that. You will see various uh, meetings that took place in terms of this uh, from your program and also uh, the 
also the participation in the general debate of the 77th uh, session in the UN General Assembly, which took place and I've already alluded to uh, when I was talking to the issues of trade and the number of meetings that actually took place. And then I'll move to the second one, which is the human rights. Here, South Africa obviously used the Human Rights Commission platform to participate in discussions, debates, deliberations with the stated objective of contributing positively to the development of norms and standards in the field of human rights that will foster the promotion, protection, and practical realization and enjoyment of human rights by all uh, across the globe. And uh, as the various uh, high level meetings that uh, we participated in, in the commission, as you can be able uh, to see across. And then I'll move to the economic and social uh, development. And uh, here the following actions underpinned the economic uh, and focus uh, during the reporting period you will be able to see which uh, starts with the 20, the 214th uh, session of the UNESCO Executive Board in Paris, and it ends with the UN Humanitarian Response Report. And then uh, the implementation of the report there. And then at the end of June uh, 2022, South Africa was also uh, represented by six, uh, in 63 positions across the multilateral system. And uh, uh, it's aimed that we will be able to maintain those uh, positions per se. And then in terms of the continental uh, cooperation, uh, where we talk uh, reports on South Africa's obligation to SADC, and AU were 100% uh, fulfilled with South Africa's commitments and effort in order to resolve continental conflicts where were, were, were honored. And there's various meetings that talks to the issues of uh, uh, peace and security where South Africa participated in, including the 14th ordinary meetings of the Specialized uh, Technical Committee on Defense, safety and security, a meeting on African chiefs of defense, the staff and heads of safety and security in Addis and so forth, uh, you will be able to see that. And then uh, in terms of South and South uh, cooperation, uh, the reports that uh, we as South Africa engaged in uh, uh, and we undertook under uh, uh, reflected uh, were as follows. As part of FOCA priority project and with uh, specific uh, emphasis on African agenda, in terms of infrastructure development, a high level meeting took place between DERCO and the DPI, the Chinese embassy, and the team of expect on the small harbors. And also at the 14th uh, BRICS summit in which president uh, participated, the leaders then adopted the Beijing Declaration, which included a standalone BRICS high level meeting on climate change, adoption of action plan for the implementation of agreement between government of BRICS states that will be on issues of culture, digital economy, uh, trade investment for sustainable and food and security and so forth. Uh, I will then move uh, to uh, various uh, issues took place, and then I will move to the North-South. Uh, and then in terms of the North-South, South Africa participated, uh, participation and interest also uh, still includes uh, that one of the African agenda. And various uh, meetings and dialogues took place in that regard. Then I'll move to uh, program four. In terms of program four, you will see that it's two uh, areas that we are reporting on public diplomacy and state protocol and consular uh, services. And uh, uh, the targets were uh, achieved 100%. The first one is talks to your key messages where 29 already in the two quarters that we are talking about were uh, distributed. And then already they have uh, held about uh, six public participation programs uh, where principals uh, take play, uh, participate, and then six op opinion pieces were already written in that regard. 
And then uh, in terms of 100% protocol services rendered, you will see that 25 of the protocol uh, services were rendered during the various visits uh, uh, during the two quarters that we are reporting on. And then 430 consular services was rendered. And then uh, in terms of the documents that we legalized, so we are standing at 32,001. And then for program one, also 100% in terms of all the areas uh, where they were supposed to uh, report, where we were able to achieve. You will see the four, in terms of the four report, one progress report was actually uh, submitted, which reflects the achievements against uh, the modernization data storage, application, network, telephony, and cybersecurity. And then in terms of uh, the audit action plan, one progress the report was also submitted, which obviously shows the corrective measures on the implementation and the implementation thereof. The training of programs uh, two already, and then in terms of progress report on the languages, one was uh, reported on. And then in terms of uh, collaboration <laughs> programs with various uh, uh, Academies, uh, one progress report was submitted. And then for the initiatives of women empowerment through gender mainstreaming, three initiatives, and then for youth, one, and then for rights of disabilities and uh, rights of persons with disabilities, uh, one initiative was done. And then in terms of legalization, in terms of legal advice uh, that was rendered, 126 legal advice and services uh, on international law was rendered. And then uh, 191 legal advice on domestic law was also uh, rendered. I will then move to our financial report for the first quarter here. Only uh, on first quarter, you'll be able to see that uh, in the first quarter from um, in terms of the programs, we, are, we were sitting on 26% of the 6.7 billion. And then in terms of the economic classification also, it was 26%. Uh, percent. Why uh, you will be able to see that the actual expenditure for first quarter, uh, which uh, amounts to uh, 1.7 billion compared to the drawings of 1.9, representing a variance of 13% lower than uh, what had been projected. Why? Because a uh, uh, spend of 335.1 million of the projected expenditure of, uh, this is uh, the low expenditure uh, spending here is attributed to the lease contract uh, for state uh, protocol lounge that has not been renewed. Uh, so that was not renewed at that particular uh, quarter by the Department of uh, Public Works and Infrastructure, as well as property maintenance project admissions that were still being pro uh, finalized through procurement. And then in terms of program two, uh, the spend was at 7.49 uh, million and the projected uh, uh, expenditure was 890.7. And here also the low expenditure uh, was uh, due to the operating leases, uh, due to the delays of securing permanent uh, accommodation to the transfer officials, uh, simply because it was uh, during a uh, high demand season, which is uh, summer where Europe uh, and Americas normally will have shortages of uh, accommodation. And then in program three, 113.5 million, uh, which was projected to be expend, uh, to be spent, and then the expenditure of 1.35, uh, uh, this lower is mainly due to high vacancy rate uh, at SMS level. And uh, the department is in the process uh, of filling these positions that we're talking about. And then in program four, it was uh, six, 63.5 instead of 72. And this one is projected simply because of international uh, travel, which did not take place. And then for program five, which is uh, our transfers, the low expenditure is due to uh, the annual contributions membership on some international organization. 
Then moving to the last quarter that we are reporting on, which is uh, quarter two, in terms of pr programs, you will see that we were actually standing on 47% expenditure of uh, the 6.7 uh, billion that I spoke to. And then in, it, together with the economic classification, it was actually the same. You will see then in terms of the explanation of what why the expenditure was actually sitting there. On program one, you will see that uh, they uh, were supposed to expend uh, 350.6 and the expenditure was, in, was standing at 501. While the low expenditure is mainly due to the appointment of professionals uh, that were planned for renovations and maintenance and also the mitigations uh, spending on uh, some capital project that, that uh, we are uh, actually assigned memo with the uh, GTEC to assist on our capital project was actually also that will be done. And project uh, program two, the spend of 89, uh, 891.4, the total expenditure was uh, more. Uh, this was, uh, you can be able to see that this was uh, in line with the projected uh, expenditure that we had uh, outlined that we will do. And then moving to pro program three, the 154.3 million projected, uh, then we spend one to six. Here, the high expending is mainly attributed to education allowance that was paid in August uh, 2022. And then for program four, also the high expenditure is, uh, is mainly due to increased uh, international travel. And then in terms of program five, the low expenditure is attributed to some humanitarian assistance that was projected in quarter two, but unfortunately uh, was not because uh, in this uh, regard, we are more reactive than any other. Thank you very much, Chairperson. It was long, uh, but yeah, thank you because it was the two quarters that we are reporting on. Thank you very much. Uh, I will hand over to you. Thank you very much, my sister. I know in the past we had agreed that we must have a presentation of ARF done separately from the department to the department's one. But because of time, uh, honorable members, can I request that we become flexible and we proceed to ARF, then discuss them together? Is that agreed? agreed. Okay, agreed. Bye, you. okay agreed, bye, thank you. Okay, bye, thank Thank you very much. We can proceed now to ARF, thank you. Uh, good morning, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, member of the committee, uh, Deputy Minister, um, Acting DG, DG and uh, member of the of the portfolio committee, as well as the senior member of the department. I'll be taking you through the performance information for the ARF for quarter one and two. My name is Fanuel Basitere. Uh, without waste of time, I'll zoom straight to slide four, basically, which is um, the summary of performance. Um, during the period under review, ARF has a total of nine areas of performance. Of those uh, areas of performance, three targets were achieved as planned four were partially achieved, and there were two areas of non-achievement. Despite not uh, um, having achieved all of our targets, a uh, stride has been made in terms of uh, try to ensure that come end of the financial year, all the targets will be uh, actually met. Moving on to the performance per program, 
program under administration. Um, under this program, we had a, a total of uh, five areas of performance, of which uh, three were achieved as planned, and we had one area which was partially achieved, and then one area was not achieved. And then moving on to the core um, program of the fund, um, under program preventation, pre prevent, prevent, uh, prevention and resolution of conflict. Um, under this program, we had one target which was not achieved. However, the, we had two projects which have been presented to the ARF Advisor Committee and they are still under consideration. We are anticipating that uh, in the next following quarters, then the, 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 the request will be finalized and then the project will be funded. Moving on to program on promotion of democracy and good governance, um, the target was not achieved basically because we did not have any, we did not receive any uh, uh, request under this particular program. We are anticipating that uh, come next, uh, the following quarter, we will have uh, some requests under this uh, program. Then moving on to the program on socioeconomic development and integration. Um, under this program, we didn't have a target. However, we received uh, two um, requests uh, for the donation of modular school in Saharau, uh, for the refugee camp in Saharau. And we also have um, agricultural development support project in Cabo del Garden, Mozambique, of which uh, it has been already uh, on the implementation stage. Then moving on to program on provision of humanitarian assistance, the project, the, the, the target was not achieved. However, strategy has been made as we have received one um, request which has been evaluated by our advisory committee of which is intending to support the people in Tigray, in Ethiopia. Uh, moving on to the financial reporting. Uh, there's an error there, sorry, Chairperson, my apology for that. Uh, balance as at, 3 not 093, not 309 2023. We had an appropriated fund of 49.46.49.6 million, and then the investment income of 20.7 million. We uh, we didn't uh, disperse any funds under the under the period which we are reporting on. Uh, however, we had a surplus of 70.4 million. And then we have cash and cash equivalent of uh, 729 million. Then, <clears throat> sorry, moving on to the receivable, we have a loan which Cuba is repaying it uh, as agreed. And uh, so far we had uh, received 109 million. And then lastly, we have a total uh, liability of 373 million. Just uh, to elaborate further, uh, as I've indicated uh, when making my presentation, we have a, we had an agricultural project for supporting the displaced people for internally displaced people in Mozambique in Cabo Delgado province. It was um, considered by ARF and uh, approved by the both ministers of finance and uh, the co-minister and funded. And it was, it's under implementation. It has been allocated uh, a total of 34 million. The first part of this uh, project has been uh, First uh, inputs were delivered in December, and then the project is underway, it's being implemented. 
And then, they, as I've indicated, Cuba is uh, repaying the, the loan as, as agreed by annually. We have received the June payment and the December payment as well has been received, however, still under the uh, DERCO um, uh, account to be transferred. And then come next quarter, then it will be reported as reflected in our account. Um, our total, the total liability of the fund is made up of the commitment project and the amount payable, pay, payable to DERCO for project implementation. Uh, Chairperson, this brings us to the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Deputy Minister, is there anything preliminarily before we get into the discussion? Well, thank okay. you very much, Chairperson. Um, but just to emphasize that the ARF, as they've just indicated that there are funds that are, are not utilized, there's a process that is going on. As you're quite aware that we are reactive than really planning for the support of, of what we are doing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Deputy Minister. Honorable Faber. Yes, Chairperson, I was just waiting for you to start that we can discuss, then I will shoot. Yes, you are the first one. Thanks, Chairperson. Good day to all the other honorable members. Um, and thanks for the presentation. That obviously the main focus of the if is the African. I ask every year because the Cuba is getting money every time. And as I was saying to me, that is to actually enhance um, what the sympathy is because of the past. Now, what I don't love this program. The from one ever it is the and I can also say I'm spending mainly my salary on groceries, but I might be and I don't know what the rest of saying spending mainly. Um then It's why and low to know how much it is um, and how long this um, program, what the time period is, because if it needs to pay off, it makes quite a difference, or two years to pay off alone. The, 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 on this 50 million that was taken to court by Africa Forum, um, which we, we can't uh, give money away to Cuba. Um, I want to know after um, there was some arrogance which also stuck with the situation that the money can't be paid out to Cuba. I want money was given to will be how much will be given to Cuba um, in this financial year according to, to the Thanks. Thank you very much. Honorable Berthi. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Jeff, from my side, I've often raised the issue about our goals and objectives and whether they're measuring the right things. And I still see that we, we, we're not on there. You know, we, 
we, we seem to be giving ourselves the easy way out. And I was hoping that with the new DG that we would look at the key performance indicators and say to ourselves that if we were to grow as an organization, that we would look at the rugby posts and then move them to a situation where we could see growth and put the KPAs in a way that would measure growth. So, for instance, um, legislation, uh, legalization of documents, we've, we've put there how many we do. Now, that's, an, that's a, just an indicator of activity. It's not an indication of productivity. An indication of productivity would rather be in how many days we do it. Because to do it in a day would be great. If we could do the 3,200 documents in one day, um, in a turnaround time of a day, we're doing well. Our productivity is excellent. But if we're doing it in a six-week turnaround time, um, as opposed to how we used to do it four years ago, which was in one day, um, then this part, the department has gone backwards by six weeks and our productivity has dropped. So we're not measuring it correctly. They're pulling the wool over our eyes. Um, and so for us, that indicator itself is actually, you know, to if we were meeting in Cape Town and we flew down to Cape Town to get an indicator like that, uh, it would be just for a tea party. So I would urge the DG to take something, an indicator specifically like that, and interrogate it further because a department like that should not be having a turnaround time of six weeks. Six weeks is where people lose jobs, where they can't uh, get to another country in time because documents cannot be legalized. And as I've said, I've had my own experience in that. Second to that, nothing in this report tells me about the disasters that we're having with our ambassadors um, or our heads of missions in, in the sense of them finding their properties, let's say. Um, now, again, for the people that are answering this question, you can perjure yourself if you don't answer these questions correctly because here, of course, we talk the truth. And, uh, you know, I asked myself, for America, let's say, in Los Angeles, where it took a long time for us to, 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 to find a property for, for our celebrity um, ambassador, uh, our celebrity consulate general. Um, I, I think we found a property now, um, but I've got a feeling that that property is about to expire now. The rental, the rent is the... The uh, uh, tenant is is putting the sorry the less lessor is putting that uh, property up for for sale, and now she will be on the road again. So I take it that this department, I'm sure, is going to be looking for a new property. Um, have they started looking for a property? Where are they going to find this property? How much money have they got to find this property? Uh, has anyone flown out to, to go find the property? Um, what's the status in, uh, what's the status, let's say, for in um, Germany? Um, is, the, uh, is the residency in Germany occupied at this point in time by the, by the High Commissioner? Or is it, if, if not by the High Commissioner, who currently occupies the residency of that, um, of the, of that uh, of the high commissioner's residency at this point in time and where does the residence where does the high commissioner reside um, these are the kind of indicators that I think this as a committee we should be oversighting because I think this rather tells us the tale of what our heads of missions and where Durko is and what they're doing. In terms of bilateral uh, and multilateral agreements, we look at, uh, we proudly look at what we've speeches we've made and what votes we've we've had. But I think before we pat ourselves on the back, I think we need to see what it translates to in the in the international stage. So it might give us a few claps and high fives with Cuba or with Russia and China and Palestine. 
And, you know, I'm not, I, I do understand our friendships and our loyalties and, you know, I'm not immune to the history and uh, trust me, I'm, I, you know, I don't have a, a bad word to, to say there, but when we look at trade agreements and we're serious about wanting to create our trade partners or keep the trade, uh, the barriers of trade low um, in South Africa, we need to look at the free world. We need to look at economies such as the EU. We need to look at economies such as America. And we do need to look at economies such as the UK. I know it is an, an inconvenience to some, but the truth is, is when AGOA is being threatened because of who we invite for uh, for war games with us on, on Durban beaches and for allowing ships to come dock in our bays and, you know, we need to we need to really question ourselves. Do we put our loyalties above the the hung, the hunger of our nation and the economy of our nation, or do we look at what the benefits are of our trade and our multilateral agreements? So again, I look at something like BRICS, and I look at the benefits of BRICS, and then I look at our trade partners in the in the free world, and I say. Um, you know, we need to find a fair balance and we need to rather, we, I know that we like to say in the press that we non-align ourselves and we like to make a nice pretty word around that, but we tend to in action antagonize. And I think that's where Durko needs to, in its national interest document, try and rather put action to the national interest documents. You know, it's no good, like, I just want to use rugby as an example. We have a sports federation that comes and 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 makes a, a political statement, um, and I don't know if they've consulted Durko about that political statement, but let's say that I, I read in the newspaper that they're now being taken to the international rugby board, and that the South African rugby now gets banned from international rugby for the, a decision that was probably Durko's decision to that Durko should have been consulted with. It has consequences for tourism. It has consequences for sports tourism. I need to understand where does Durko fit into this? You know, was Durko consulted? So when we talk about multilateralism, we have to understand that the image we portray is not just on words on paper and not just the speeches in the UN. It's how we vote. Another thing, Chair, is something as embarrassing as presenting credentials. Do you know that there's ambassadors in, in South Africa that have come from abroad that since October have not presented their credentials to the president yet? Now that's embarrassing. You know, for a country like South Africa, I can understand if it happened in some uh, country that, you know, is, is is really far back and I don't want to insinuate names or insulting names like a uh, type of Republic or anything, but in South Africa, that should not be happening. You know, we should have a well-oiled machine like Durko being able to, to ensure that the presidency and the, the departments of international relations and cooperation can ensure that the, the, the easiest thing we can do is present credentials. You know, it shouldn't be like the old administration. And from my side, as I say, you know, these key performance indicators, it's coming in and interrogating. It's its like looking at stargazing. We're looking at a picture. We're looking at a picture that was drawn by in nursery school when the actual picture on the ground is far more serious and far more grave, as we saw at, the, at our oversight visit. Um, you know, when we actually see the cracks and we actually see what's happening on the ground. So, so I would actually ask um, that we, you know, that we ask the tough questions, yeah, but that, uh, you know, that we revisit the key performance indicators and we ask for tougher key performance indicators. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much. Honorable Nkosi? Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Um, Problems, but I will just my face to indicate that he will speak and the request to switch off. Yes, you may because.
you may have to shift to another place there. The network is quality is not good. Yeah. No, Chair, I, I think that's perfect. Um, at this stage, uh, yeah. I think at this stage, uh, it, 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 uh, it's proper for us to welcome the uh, both reports on progress made in uh, the first and second quarter. I just have um, a comment and, and, and two questions. Firstly, okay, just uh, on the question, in, in what way are the BNCs and the work that we do related to achieving the objectives of the AFCTA. Is there a link between what we do and the work that DTIC does, including the extent to which we link with the Secretariat uh, just to gauge impact on uh, the finalization of the protocols in the AFCTA, particularly the rules of origin. And to what extent does DECO play a political role in ensuring that our partners in political uh, governments on the continent endorse uh, these rules and uh, contribute to us progress in achieving the um, both uh, a vertical and horizontal integration of the economies of the of the continent. Overall, chair, I think that the the achievements highlight uh, the extensive work that the department does. But one would like to know in relation to each one of the bilaterals and the uh, trade missions. To what extent does DTIC and the department cooperate in achieving the, 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 the said achievements and what the, is the role of all other related departments. Uh, I've asked this question before, I'll repeat, is there coordination or enhanced coordination between South Africans role players that find themselves in those spaces that contrib contributes to the achievement of the the objectives. Chair, the second issue is around the ICT. I think we've agreed in our last oversight meeting with the department that we need a focused meeting on the ICT, and I will leave that at this stage. The third issue is around um, SAPA or the migration or the movement towards uh, ensuring that we have got SAPTA. Again, I know the fact that we are awaiting the department's input in relation to how uh, we create SATPA, but I think it is important that on a quarterly basis, at least we have an indicator that's, that informs us to what extent there is progress or no progress towards uh, doing the same. I just wanted to conclude with the comment and what Honorable Bergman and Honorable Faber are saying, but I just want to conclude saying that it, is, it, is, it has always been a, an approach of our country that, uh, to paraphrase something that was once said that please don't expect uh, your enemies to be our enemies and your friends to be our friends. We, we, we participate in an open, in a very open world that is democratizing all the time. And that in doing so, in the, it is in the interest of our, our country and all continents and countries that we relate to, that we forge relationships that are based on mutual beneficiation and uh, enhancing our economic development at all times. 
uh, that in doing so we will align with anybody that serves our interests, but with any, also with anybody uh, who is related to the agenda of the underdeveloped world or developing world. It helps us not to continue colonial relations um, that have not benefited the entire continent or the country or have benefited sections of only parts of our country. When we, we, we have a responsibility towards uh, the Southern Hemisphere and the developing world as a country longer there, not, not by our choice, but by what the colonizers chose to look at. The third point uh, is that in relation, uh, uh, in relation to that, it's, it's clear that um, the understanding of our non-aligned approach at international level is, is either misplaced or misunderstood directly. Uh, and when we debate or discuss the national interest document, it's something that we thoroughly need to engage in and emotively, et cetera. I can, it's, it's easy for me, I mean, to, get, uh, I mean, to, to raise issues that are, I flare up uh, in Western Sahara, in Palestine, and Israel now, but I don't think that it is helpful uh, to really uh, raise them in a way that ignores the responsibilities that we have as a country uh, towards ourselves and to our economic and political diplomacy. I will leave it at that, Jefferson. We've discussed this matter several times. And I think maybe it's high time that we discuss the national interest document so that we express our views quite broadly, not in relation and reaction to a quarterly report. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Honorable Nkosi. Honorable Msani. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I just have a few questions and a few inputs. Um, Chair, I would recommend that we set up a proper meeting where we can discuss this program too, especially as per regions um, of meetings that have been held by the political heads of the department and what outcome would have been achieved or what memorandums have been agreed upon and what commitments did we make as a country so that we can be able to be in a better position to actually participate in all the meetings that the department comes and presents as their performance for the different quarters. Because the way that it's presented now it's done in such a way that it's just a, by the way, a ticking box exercise that Africa is in Europe and um, Asia, yes, we've had meetings, but it's not detailed enough to equip the committee in participating on what was agreed by the political um, heads in these meetings. So I would recommend, Chair, that even if we break it up in per regions, um, we put it in our program, that we discuss um, the outcomes and the programs of these meetings that have been held. And then secondly, Chair, I want to check um, with the uh, earthquake that has happened in Syria and uh, Turkey, have we had to rescue South Africans and maybe bring them home? Are there any uh, South Africans that have been deceased? Apart from the gift of the givers, um, what role has South Africa played in assisting, um, especially in Syria with the blockades and um, what, what are we advocating for as, um, and in which platform as South Africa in, in assisting um, um, Syria? And then, Chair, on the positions of the multilateral systems that South Africa is holding, Previously, in such meetings, we've requested from the department, and I've never seen that report given to us, where we questioned which positions are these that South Africa is holding in these multilateral systems, 
um, who are these people that are representing us? Because most of the times, like even yesterday, in the deputy minister's speech, we heard him speaking of oh, Dr. Pumzile Mwuga, and it's always just been about the one name, but we don't get who are the other people, the 63 that keeps on getting mentioned and um, what positions are they holding and for how long, what is the duration for? So Chair, I don't know if we can have this uh, presentation done or just a list sent to your office and then disseminated to us as members so that we are well equipped to find out who's who are these people that are representing us? Because you'll find some people are not the best representatives of the South African um, foreign policy to be in a particular position because we don't even know how they get nominated to be placed in these uh, multilateral bodies. And then Chairperson, um, I want to agree with the previous speaker that you know, the, the, the International Relations uh, Performance Report, it seems like it's a rush um, report, which does not, um, it, it's, it's, it's not accounting properly on, on, on issues that have been dealt by the department for that particular quarter. Um, We've had so many questions regarding property. We've had so many questions regarding ICT, but um, the indexes that are being presented here, Chair, they don't do justice to addressing such issues where we've been told that some missions abroad uh, will be shut down and some property will be sold, but we don't see um, the presentation does not do justice in showing that the properties in Namibia that have been sold, we've made a saving of this much. And the ones that are still being rented, the expenditure is at this much. So um, we shouldn't take this exercise, especially for such a department as a, a, a ticking box exercise. And then chair, lastly, let, let us welcome the joint naval drill that will be happening uh, with Russia and China and say that, you know, when the Americans, the Germans, they go and support Ukraine, some people amongst us here, they don't say anything. They don't uh, make comments or, you know, but when it comes to South Africa and its foreign policy, um, certain people want to speak to terms that um, align with them, but not with the country. And I want to agree with Honorable Nkosi that we need to, as a committee, maybe just save a day where we will unpack the, the South African alliances and what we stand for as South Africa as a country. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Honorable Msani. Honorable Mpanza. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Sorry uh, <clears throat> about that. No, Chairperson, first of all, let me <clears throat> welcome your opening remarks and uh, also a moment of silence uh, that you, are, you have requested us to observe <clears throat> because uh, I think we are a caring nation and uh, when uh, painful things are happening to other people and in other countries and <clears throat> in our country. Uh, we should also uh, show uh, solidarity in the spirit of Ubuntu. Chairperson, let me also welcome the presentation on uh, both uh, the department's performance and uh, the African Renaissance. Uh, <clears throat> just want to say, Chair, uh, on the ARF, it means that uh, particularly on the money that uh, were about to be paid to Cuba, I think we'll, we will always have disagreements uh, in this committee, but I think that's the dynamism 
of the committee uh, that <clears throat> we are just uh, not agreeing on everything. Sometimes we agree to disagree. Uh, as the emphasis on, on Africa as, a, as, 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 as our agenda <clears throat> is, it, I think our understanding is that it should not be done at the exclusion uh, of other countries in other continents. And the African Renaissance Fund is not an African continent uh, fund, but it's an international fund. And I think this point we have raised it many, many times. So uh, if there is a need to support a particular pro program or project in Cuba, and then the department has done the correct um, analysis, so be it. And it should not then be said, no, because it's Cuba, uh, then we must focus in Africa, which we agree, but not an exclusion uh, of other uh, fellow uh, <clears throat> uh, global citizens. Chairperson, um, I have uh, raised this thing uh, quite a number of uh, times when we have this uh, kind of presentations. Uh, <clears throat> the acting uh, COO, uh, when she presented, she said uh, these are done uh, in line with uh, the SMART principles, but I don't think they have uh, reached uh, to, the, to the highest level of actually doing things uh, in the SMART principles, because if you see some of the things that they have not achieved, it's, it's things that uh, they, are, they are beyond their control. And one of uh, the, 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 the smart principles is that uh, if something is not funded, it's not by for, don't put it. Or if something we don't have control over, don't put it because you, you are actually setting yourself uh, for failure. But, but I just see some of those things uh, still being, being there. And as a result, they, they are not uh, achieved. Uh, Chairperson, the other issue, <clears throat> maybe uh, I've, 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 I will align myself with what uh, Honorable Ngozi said, uh, as far as African uh, free trade, uh, 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 as far as African continental free trade agreement, how is this uh, also talking to that? Uh, but also generally, <clears throat> we have raised the issue uh, as a committee of the economic diplomacy. Uh, how these things, you know, uh, the bilaterals and the multilaterals, uh, you know, platforms that we, we get into and we sign treaties and protocols. In, 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 and the, uh, Chair, you, you are the one who is, how is it uh, benefiting South Africans, particularly the poor, and the, the most vulnerable uh, sections of our society. Uh, and actually also talking in the, what uh, the Deputy Minister Mashibo Lamin has also mentioned, the issue of addressing and making a dent uh, in addressing the triple challenges of poverty, unemployment and inequality uh, in our country. Because it's, it's good and, and well to be in different platforms and uh, sign agreements, trade agreements with the different countries and all those things. But how are we, Chairperson, implementing what you have introduced in, in, in this committee and we have adopted it, that uh, community-based oversight model because we will have uh, to implement it uh, uh, in action, not, not, not in a document, because we've done that as a committee. If people say to us uh, in our constituencies, 
uh, that we, we are serving. Uh, they ask us and say, but how is this thing helping us to deal with uh, our challenges that were faced here, issues of uh, load shedding, issues of uh, water shedding, you know, issues of uh, roads and, and no economic activity that is taking place uh, in our uh, locality. And how is this thing that we are doing internationally uh, as an international committee uh, assisting us? So, so I, I think uh, that's a discussion also, if we have to package chairperson as it is proposed by uh, Honorable Ngozi uh, on discussing issues of uh, the in our national interest document and 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 also uh, Honorable Msani he was she was also proposing another session where we'll engage on issues of the multi realism and the bilateral agreements that we, we signed so that we'll understand what those things mean and in terms of our foreign policy, where, where do we stand? So I, I would also propose that while in that package, we also set aside in discussing this issue of economic diplomacy, uh, also uh, <clears throat> uh, pairing it with uh, the community uh, based uh, oversight model. Uh, because we have to, uh, you remember, a part of our oversight, uh, Chairperson, was also to implement that, uh, but we're going to start with the uh, uh, institutions of higher learning university, not West and KZ10, but unfortunately, uh, that lack or that uh, part could not be uh, realized. Uh, hence, we, we also deal with, with other issues, uh, excluding those. But... I'm sure in the program of the committee, it will then uh, <clears throat> find expression again. Okay. Chairperson, um, on the issue of um, the financials, I have just uh, picked one thing here, uh, that uh, from all the programs, uh, program one right to the, to, 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 to the last program, there's one pattern and it's always, there's a low spending. Low spending and <clears throat> one of the areas that makes one uh, to be a little bit worried. Uh, it, it talks about ICT. Uh, there's uh, as a result of ICT not uh, being uh, uh, implemented or <clears throat> uh, put in place. It talks about uh, compensation of uh, employees due to the failure of information and communication technology systems in both quarters, first quarter and second quarters. And but that's the trend. Now the department, at this point in time, is also priding itself that uh, it has achieved almost hundred uh, percent targets in 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 in, in the targets that it has set itself. But in that achievement, there is this recurring or the pattern of um, low spending. In fact, even the spending of the overall in the department uh, is very, very low also. Now, we have uh, had a session uh, where we were asking, you know, in different uh, committees, uh, that's been uh, been discussed. The issue of underspending, and uh, I think uh, we are seeing this thing now. We'll have a situation where the monies are sent back to treasury because of low spending. So, how is the department uh, going to deal with this thing? The other area where there's also an issue of low spending is on the issue of the vacancies, and uh, we have. Uh, raise this issue. If, if you don't have uh, the human resources, how do you then, because you need human resource and the tools of trade, which is ICT and those things are affected. So, so Chair, I am a little bit worried that uh, 
the pattern must must really change uh, in in other uh, quarters uh, going forward. Otherwise, then it's pointless to achieve the number of targets that you have put or projects, 23, and you have achieved 23, but uh, in that there's low uh, spending uh, in terms of uh, uh, using the funds so that uh, those things will be uh, uh, raised. So, Chair, the issues that we have raised also lastly, as my last point, uh, in our oversight, the last oversight we did in the department, I think uh, we must also find uh, a session where we also get a, a report uh, back on those ones. I remember that we said we will have a session to deal with ICT issues of uh, project separation of project management unit with finance uh, and, and, and all other issues that uh, other members have, have said. But uh, we know the progress but uh, it's, it's, it's really uh, not uh, satisfactory uh, if we are going to turn things around as this department. And lastly, Chair, the, the expectation of uh, uh, ARF moving to SAPTA, I think it's a, it's a matter that has been it's long overdue to be finalized. So wherever it's, it's stuck, uh, it, must, it, must, it must be addressed. Uh, as a matter of agents. Thanks very much, Chairperson. Thanks very much, Honorable Mpansa and the Honorable Members who have made contributions in the discussions of both the reports of ARF and the Department. Over to you, Deputy Minister, and your team. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. I will allow uh, our officials to respond, then I will, I will make a summary at the end. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, uh, Deputy Minister. If I can go first, uh, my name is Clayson Munyela. I'm currently acting for the Director General who is in Addis Ababa. The, I'll attempt to deal with uh, some of the questions that uh, honorable members have raised. Uh, through your honorable chair and, and then hand over to, to my colleagues to weigh in on the other questions. The first one, I'll take the easy one first, uh, honorable chair. Uh, the question that was raised around uh, whether South Africa is contributing uh, to assist the, the countries of Turkey as well as Syria following the devastation of the earthquake um, that occurred there. The answer is yes, uh, Honorable Chair. Um, we have a phased in uh, type of approach in terms of the assistance that we are providing. The first phase uh, had to do with the search and rescue uh, missions that most countries deployed uh, to assist because people were still buried under the rubble um, to assist in searching for survivors and uh, helping them. Uh, you would have seen, Honorable Chair, when the Gift of the Givers, uh, the NGO, uh, that we're very proud of as a country, uh, deployed their team, that the South African government sent uh, the K-9 team, which is led by Brigadier Vimla Moodley, um, uh, with sniffer dogs as part of the search and rescue, the first phase of the intervention. And in fact, I saw in the last uh, 72 hours that... Uh, uh, amongst the people they rescued, uh, the South African team was an 80-year-old lady uh, who was still buried under the rubble. So we, we actually uh, quite happy that the intervention is bearing fruit. The second phase of uh, the South African intervention uh, would entail uh, assistance through our humanitarian directorate at DECO. Uh, we are going through the governance processes of approvals now uh, to get approvals uh, for a contribution uh, that will be channeled through the aid agencies that are on the ground uh, to, to provide support to both Turkey and Syria. Uh, and the last phase would probably entail the post um, uh, part of the reconstruction process that will have to take place when you know this first phase has been dealt with. Again, there, uh, we're looking at uh, options through the African Renaissance Fund and other mechanisms within the system to be able to provide further assistance uh, to both countries. 
Um, there was a question as well, Honorable Chair, uh, regarding the issue of expenditure um, right across the department. It's, it's a matter that uh, I know the management of the department is quite um, hands-on with. We are seized with that, uh, particularly on the capital budget, uh, given that we left with literally weeks uh, before the end of the financial year. So we can assure the, uh, the committee that uh, we are zooming into areas where the spending is slow or lagging behind in certain instances owing to uh, situations that are not necessarily internal affected by other external uh, um, uh, conditions but uh, we've projectized all those areas uh, to go into overdrive uh, so that we unblock whatever is blocked uh, and ICT is one such area uh, and as members, uh, honorable members were saying, we have agreed that we'll have a dedicated session so that we can come and present comprehensively uh, the work that, that, that's been done, including uh, how it uh, affects the issue of expenditure and the progress on the key projects, uh, and particularly the impact on the business of DERCO, because you don't just uh, implement projects uh, for the sake of, there has to be a direct impact in terms of the operations of the department uh, being assisted with solutions uh, that are IT uh, uh, related, given that this is an information driven department. Um, and then, um, um, yeah, let me hand over to, to my other colleagues. I can come back uh, if they uh, need me to assist with other questions. Uh, Acting COO. Thank you, Action DG. Uh, I think uh, uh, with regard to the questions that have been asked, there was an, a question with regard to the targets and also the indicators that we currently have. I think we have noted that question. It was also asked uh, during the site visit by the members. And what we will be doing, obviously, is that in the new financial year with our new APP, all this will be changed because it was not possible to actually be able to change uh, the indicators and also the targets in the middle of the financial year. As asked by Honorable Bergman, we are working on that and with a special focus on the issues of consular service. I think from my side, uh, that's the question that I can be able to answer. Uh, let me check. The others, I think we have noted like uh, issues like which positions are held internationally. We will then, uh, as part of a briefing, the portfolio committee, when they call us, will then be able to come with uh, those uh, answers. Thank you very much. Acting DG, I think. Uh, we'll Thank you very have... much, um, Chairperson. Well, um, we really appreciate the issues that were raised by uh, honorable members. I think the issue that uh, Honorable Faber has just raised on the 50 million on AFRI forum and how much was given to, to, to Cuba. I think this question has been answered by the minister, by myself, by the president. We indicated that um, in 2018, um, Cuba was loaned 147.6 million. And um, they have already now pay back uh, 63 million. And this is the report that we had last year in May. Remember, they have paid in December the amount that has been indicated there. So, so we are looking forward for the last payment of the loan on the 30th of June, 2026. So, so now I'm, I'm quite aware that uh, the DA is very much aggrieved on this one. Of course, we have got right to take it wherever you want to take it as you indicated that we are taking to the Auditor General, 
you are taking to the finance committee, Mr. Sviso and all that, but it, it's okay, we'll, we'll respond uh, as you, you're taking this process forward. The issue of the ARF and, and the loan, we have indicated in, mo in most of the questions that were raised in parliament that AR, ARF, true ARF, we have given Cuba a loan and that agreement was clinched by President Zuma in 2010. And it has been agreed, it has been agreed by cabinet and now it is also in keeping with our financial legislation, as Treasurer has also indicated that any, any government can give any other government a loan, as long as there are good terms and there are good interests that they are agreed upon. So uh, this is a uh, standing in, in that particular um, level. O on the issue of the KPAs, um, I think we, we, we need members to really appreciate our situation as, as their core that um, we will not predict before that how many legal documents might be processed by us. As much as we can have a baseline of the previous year, it will only depend of how busy it's, 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 it's ourselves in terms of the legal document that needed to be processed and so on. So therefore it becomes very difficult to put a KPA that has got say we're going to process so much number of, 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 of legal documents because this is per uh, uh, demand. Uh, but we'll look at it, we're, 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 the, the DG is also uh, in, in the process of really uh, taking forward the issue of the strat plan and also the finalization of the APP of 2022-2024. So we'll, we'll also indicate uh, those issues so that we, we make sure that we, we do that. Um, we, we, we consider all, all those issues that have been uh, given. The report on the disaster of accommodation of certain members, you, you know, th this is not part of the, uh, the, 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 the APP, and this is not part of uh, our, our report now, first quarter and second quarter uh, targets. But we, we really open that if members will want us to bring a report of how far are we dealing with the issues of accommodation of excellences outside? And, and how do we really put uh, systems in place to control the lease documents? Because in most cases now, remember the Auditor General have also raised the issue of uh, management of, of the leases and, and, and all that. But now we've put systems in the department that before uh, 90 days, we need to also to scrutinize the, all the, the leases that are expiring and start to take better decisions and start to take the process forward. So, but at hand now, I don't have a report uh, about the accommodation of the excellence that you, 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 you have indicated. But I, I know that there's something that is done because we've got a system in place in the department really to manage issues of, of, um, of, of, of leases. Oh, okay, and on, on the issue of the, the bilateral and the outputs of the bilateral, I, I really appreciate um, uh, your, your, your input, uh, Mr. Berkman, and also Honorable Msana, because um, we, we've got the reports, we, we've got reports in every discussions, we've got reports, we've got agreements, but most of the issues that we agree upon in our bilateral as DECO, these are the issues that need to be implemented by the line function department. So some of the reports are there and remember, we, we came in in this document, in this department, when there are many agreements, memorandum of understanding that have been signed previously, but they are not operational. So our visits now, we also look at all those issues and also agree with the land function department, whether this is still necessary, this is still need to be reviewed and so on. 
So, so now the implementing uh, side is the line function department, as we have indicated issues of agriculture for tourism and so on. So we'll we, we, we really uh, get away if you really want us to come and give you a report country by country, what happened here, how many agreements you had here, how many are functionals and all that. So we, we, we are really keen to, to really um, give you those such reports. Well, uh, the issue of the accreditation of, of ambassadors, um, the presenti presenting of the accreditation or of credentials of ambassadors in South Africa. I, I, I want to indicate to members that definitely, you know, if you're speaking about an ambassador that arrived in September and now it's February, is not accredited, I want to tell you that we have got lots of our ambassadors in other countries that are almost two years and three years about to, to finish their term, but not yet accredited, but they are working there. So, so now uh, these are some of the things that in South Africa, definitely we are better off. We, we are really better off. Uh, it can take six months and so on, but I need members to understand that the, the credentials that are submitted, at, at some other point, it delays by the person that is submitting the credentials. I want to give you one example of another country of an ambassador that has been appointed by the country, but that ambassador has got businesses in South Africa, has got uh, certain things in South Africa and all that, he has got a citizenship in South Africa. So we, we, we can't accredit such a person. That person must relinquish all these things and, and, and become a representative of, of his or her country. So now it will delay because we will want this person to take a choice, to say you, you hand over back our citizenship. You, you, you really cancel all your businesses that you have here in South Africa because now your country wants you to be an ambassador because you can't do both. So, so some of the delays might be such issues and security issues for that matter. So members must bear with us, but we, if we can compare with other countries, we are better off. Well, on the issue of um, the migration to SACPA, uh, the progress report, I think we, we the acting DG is here, it's listening to that. We, we have discussed the, 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 the report, we have discussed the legislation. We, we wanted our legal uh, section to deal with certain clauses and revise them properly before we take it to cabinet and also we take it to parliament. So the process is on. So we are trying our best really to comply on that. Um, on the issue of assistance that we are giving to, to, to the devastating earthquake of Syria and Turkey. Well, as government, uh, we, we, we didn't really uh, had a meeting or cabinet had a meeting of what assistance we can do, but we really appreciate that a South African NGO gift of the givers is there. And also members to note that um, uh, Syria is under sanctions of America. So their skies are handled by America. So there's no, no aeroplane that can fly to Syria. So we, we are still looking at how really a gift of the givers access, make people in Syria to access the, the humanitarian that they are giving. So in that particular uh, uh, situation of, of the sanctions. So, so of course, we, 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 we really pleading to America really to, up, to uplift the sanctions uh, due to the difficulties that uh, Syria is facing. So uh, for now, but our minister has just made an initiative that um, is calling for South Africans really to, to send um, blanket to Derko. And I know that the acting DG is aware of this. 
and coordinating. We're also requesting members of, 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 of parliament really to help us and send placket because in the two countries as it stands now, it's very, very cold. So, so we're trying our best out of our pocket really to contribute to send a number of blankets, one or two, it will be really appreciated. Well, um, of course, uh, Honorable Banza, we, 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 <clears throat> we have a very serious, a, a very slow pace in terms of filling our vacancies, but the DG is really uh, on, on the matter now because it will become an audit query if we leave uh, vacancies for uh, more than six months or so. But the, 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 the acting DG is listening to that because it's also the DDG for corporate services. So we, we, we are sorting this matter out. So we'll, we'll give a report at the, at, at the right time, the progress around that. Well, on the report of properties that uh, are, are sold and also the missions that are closed, I agree with you, Honorable Msana, we will we, 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 we'll prepare a report, we'll send a report of the progress around this particular matter. Uh, I thank you, Chairperson. I take this opportunity to thank you, Deputy Minister. Deputy Minister Bortes for joining us from wherever he is in the world. The department's uh, bureaucracy that accompanied you and prepared the report for presentation to the portfolio committee to ensure that we fulfill parliament's role. One of the, the pillars of, uh, of, of parliament's role is holding the executive accountable. The other two are lawmaking and uh, people's participation. So we want to thank you for making sure that we, we fulfill that important role by parliament. We also want to thank the honorable members for participating in the discussions, uh, probing questions on the report that has been presented. My sense is that we have agreed that uh, Based on the impressive nature of Cuba's response to the law by not defaulting, one of the things we'll do is to, as the committee, congratulate the People's Republic of Cuba for not defaulting on the law and that the department will indicate, uh, as the minister was saying, the deputy minister, I think you were saying the last tranche payment will be in June, July, if I'm not wrong which responses to the question that was raised by Honorable Faber. <clears throat> so, so we will accordingly, as the committee, congratulate the People's uh, Republic of Cuba for honoring uh, the agreement between South Africa and themselves and not defaulting, as I have said. Um, Deputy Minister, at the right time, we will come back to the matter I've been raising myself, which is in the preamble of the constitution. I raised this matter when I was still in the tourism portfolio committee. I've raised it in international relations. That the preamble of the constitution of the Republic of South Africa says we need to deal with injustices of the past. And one of the fundamental injustices of the past, which is linked to the land, is the matter of the economy the control, the ownership of the economy. And therefore, as we present all the statistics, which looks very good, by the way, uh, Deputy Minister yesterday in the debates presented very good statistics on the reciprocative nature of investments to South Africa as a consequence of our role at an international level. I just hope that uh, at some point, I don't know when, but as part of dealing with this injustice of the past, as we present these percentages of investments to South Africa and South Africa investments abroad, we will do a racial disaggregation. 
because we will not be able to deal with that page one of the preamble of the constitution of injustice of the past if we don't quantify, if we don't quantify what comes out of our efforts as the democratic state to make sure that we deal with the injustices of our past. I know that has not been the modus operandi of the department, but there must be a point where we may have to start afresh and introduce this matter so that South Africans can know these global percentages that we present in the very good reports based on the good work that we do. Where do we stand as Africans in particular and Blacks in general? Because apartheid and colonialism were not in broad terms. They were very specific. And apartheid was worse because it was very specific in terms of dealing with Blacks and Africans. When it comes to colonialism, yes, it dealt with us as Blacks and Africans, but at the same time, there was the fight between the British and the Africans. In the course of that, they fought for our own land here in South Africa. But reconciliation now, that's where we are in terms of the Freedom Charter. South Africa belongs to all who live in it. So I hope one day, Deputy Minister, we can reach that stage where current generations and future generations can say, we did our best in terms of quantifying the strides of the efforts we are making in making sure that uh, when we talk about this exports and we say we have so much percentage of exports of agricultural products, of the mines and everything else, the medico from this country, we deal with what is in the preamble of the constitution, the need to deal with the injustices of the past, which were man-made, they were designed, man-made and man-executed. So they have to be redesigned by men and men must reverse those man-made, um, and justices that were imposed on, on Africans and Blacks so that we can as Black, White, Indian, colored, qualitatively em embrace and move together forward. Otherwise, we thank you for the report, uh, Deputy Minister, as I have said. And the team, honorable members, will see you in the debates that are going to be taking place in about two hours on the state of the nation address. Mudibon nelelo nala samay sen tlabaya danki khenit jalada. Thank you very much, Chepese. Ya libuha, Chepese. Amanga. Thank you, honorable supra. Man, man, sonar bangor sa ikot.